Okay, welcome to today's video. Well, we're gonna take a look at this Kunkin KP182 again. Uh, it's a load that uh, I got a while back. I think I've shown it before on the channel, but today we're gonna try to add the communication to it that the 184 has, because this is the 182, it doesn't have COM, but uh, I have a sneaking suspicion we can add it to it because when you go through the menu settings, the COM port options are there. So uh, yeah, we're gonna open this thing up and see if we can add a COM port to it. Okay, well, first thing we have to do is open it and uh, luckily there's just screws around this metal case here and then it comes right off. Uh, no, uh, no tabs or anything we gotta pop off. All right, and that is all there is to it. It opens right up from there. So the first thing you'll notice is uh, a lot of the reviews on this thing are of the 184. And so you can see what the circuit board looks at on other people's videos of the 184. But the main thing to notice here is that our, uh, it's the same circuit board. So we're just missing all of the components right here that go into the uh, RS-232 port and the 485 port as well. So uh, all what's going on here is we're missing the stuff. Uh, so in theory, we could populate these components. However, I actually don't know what all of the missing components are. I don't have a 184 to look at. The main ones that I would kind of need to know is like this isolation chip right here. You know, what, what is this isolation chip? And um, it, that's really it, because I'd probably only put the 232 port on here if I was gonna do it. But the other thing is, is the metal work, because this, this back panel right here is metal. It doesn't have the holes cut in it, so um, I'm not gonna attempt to repopulate these parts. Uh, one thing I did already kind of confirm is that the power is here. You really should just be able to repopulate that stuff and it, it work. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing is using um, this guy right here. So what this is right here is a little isolated USB to serial adapter that I've made in the past. And so I'm just gonna try putting this on the board. Uh, one of the other, the other things you'll notice is you have uh, labeled 3.3 volts, TX, RX, and ground. I, I, I know these go to a different serial port, so I don't think that we can do it, but uh, yeah, this isolation chip right here is gonna be where the data comes across and comes up over to this uh, RS-232. Uh, I, I think they used a UT3232 for the serial chip here. One other thing to note here is that they did draw the symbol here that this is isolated, and if we check the power to the power for the microcontroller, we'll see that it is in fact isolated. Uh, they get that off of uh, this tap of the transformer here. So we have uh, one tap over on this side of the transformer that uh, powers the uh, the side of the board, and then uh, the, these two blue taps right here that come off right there, uh, come to this little uh, power supply circuit here, and then uh, then that powers the isolated side of it. So uh, this is actually true isolation here. It, it seems uh, I couldn't find any signs of it not matching over. Uh, but let, just to uh, kind of show that, so this is the ground side of that isolation chip. This is the 3.3 volts there. So uh, ground and the power of the other side of the isolation. Uh, no continuity between them. Okay, so the uh, main processor here is a STM32. Uh, it is the um, F103 uh, series. Uh, and so this one's a pretty common uh, microcontroller. I've used it in some of my projects here on the channel before in the past, like that uh, gauge pod that I made a really long time ago. So I'm actually pretty familiar with this chip. And uh, PA9 and 10, are um, right right around here. They're like pin 30 and 31, if I'm not mistaken, uh, of the microcontroller. Uh, and those are uh, UART1. Uh, and we can trace them over here. So we have continuity there. And then we have continuity there. So, yep, we uh, 
we know that this isolation chip right here is the one that the data comes across. So we'll just tap in uh, over here. Oh, and the other thing to note is that these two uh, aren't coming over here. They're going to one of the other, they're probably going to UART zero over here. Um, so yeah, the, this one is a different uh, UART port. But yes, so the serial coming out that we're gonna tap into right here is a UART serial. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just gonna be at the 3.3 volts. I would caution against using one of these types of um, UART adapters, just because these guys are not isolated. You're gonna wanna protect your computer, especially with, um, you know, a unit under test on here that could, you know, catastrophically fail. Uh, you really don't wanna take your computer out with this. So, okay, well, let's uh, go ahead and just start hooking up to it and uh, see if we can get any data or communication out of this. Okay, so now we're all hooked up. We got our TX, RX, and our power hooked up to our USB to serial adapter. I did tap into the resistor that was right there. I could physically see the trace going there. It was just easier to solder onto with this wire. Plugged into the computer. Let's go ahead and turn on the load and then open up the software that's included. Uh, one thing, this is Modbus, it's not Skippy. So, um, you know, good luck writing your own driver to talk to it. Uh, I, I'll probably attempt to do that okay, at so we some have point the in time. software opened up. Let's go ahead and click the connect button and it recognized the device. So sure enough, all that we had to do was attach the serial to it. Uh, obviously, as quick and easily as I made this, I kind of figured it out off camera before recording it. But yes, that, it is as simple as just adding a serial adapter to where the data pins go uh, and, and it will work. Like I said, you're going to want to use an isolated adapter of some sort. Uh, I used one that I created, but obviously you can just get on Amazon and buy an isolated uh, UART adapter and use it. Any, any isolated UART adapter is going to work. Uh, you just need to go from USB to serial and it'll work just fine. Uh, one of the things you'll probably need to go into this setting. You come into the first one for the settings and you have your address because you can do these on uh, RS-485 where you can control multiple loads at the same time. So you need an address for them. But then you have the baud rate and that that's where I noticed, I said, oh, hey, this has the baud rate um, information in here. So clearly I should be able to, um, to connect to it. Uh, so just to show that it's connected, let's hook up a power supply to it and uh, take a look at okay, it. I'm not going to uh, press the load button again on the screen because that was very obnoxious, but to turn on the load, uh, you uh, click right there, but it makes a really obnoxious beep on the screen. So let's just go ahead and use the button on here and that turned it on to one amp. Uh, and then you can change your load setting to, let's just put it at 0.75. There we go. So you're able to control the load with the software. And like I said, this is their software that they package. So yeah, this is like a, a Modbus protocol that it uses. Uh, so that is a, a little bit more fun to interact with than Skippy is, for example. Uh, Skippy is just ASCII readable, so you just send it a ASCII readable command every time and uh, then it works. So yeah, uh, that is the setup here. Let's, uh, let's try to button this thing up and make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, well, this is it for the project. I just kind of mounted it on the side. Uh, I didn't drill holes in the metal case yet. I gotta figure out if I'm uh, 
really going to use the uh, feature very much on this. I, I mostly just wanted to check and see if, hey, can this feature be added to the 182? I couldn't find any information about that online. The menu kind of suggested that it could since it was in the settings. Wanted to test it out and sure enough it worked. So uh, I'm really glad it worked. It's kind of interesting. There was clearly some intent for the 182s to have connectivity because the software recognizes that this is a 182 and not a 184 uh, when you connect to it. But yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, I was really glad it worked. It's a, a pretty simple mod to uh, figure out and add to it. Uh, I'll have a link in the description for a uh, isolated USB uh, serial adapter here. Uh, that you should be able to use to recreate this mod. The one that I used in this video is something I created. It was uh, just a little uh, project I had uh, done myself in the past. I, I haven't released the boards because there were some design errors in the board that I haven't fixed yet, but uh, I know how to work around the error for, for what I was using. Uh, I'll probably revisit this project at some point in the future, uh, at least this one, so that way I can release those board files and get them out into the wild. Uh, this one, I may or may not revisit it. Uh, if I do revisit this, it'll be for making uh, my own software that interfaces with it. I didn't buy the one with communication just because I wasn't planning on building an ATE of any sort with uh, with this. So I hope you guys liked it. And again, check the uh, links in the description uh, to uh, try to do this yourself. Uh, I'll link the 184 as well, because honestly for the price, if you don't have one already, just buy the 184 instead of the 182. Uh, but if you already have a 182, this is a, a fun little mod you can do to it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys like this and I will see you in the next one.